On May 26, the technical test for the upcoming Texas Chainsaw Massacre game went live for those lucky enough to get Steam keys. After three days of running for my life from Leatherface, or making people run for their lives as Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game is sure to be a contender for Game of the Year. This deep dive and review is sectioned into chapters. A dive on the lore behind the game, and the story the victims and family members are living through. An introduction to the victims and family members, a chapter on the pedals experience, created by the game devs as a teaser. A look back at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game for the Atari 2600 from 1983. My own thoughts on the tech test and the experiences I had playing it. A spoiler-filled section of leaks from various data mines. And finally, a conclusion. And the hope that you'll be as equally as excited as me for August 18th when the game launches. So sit back, grab a snack, and we'll find out who will survive and what will be left of them. 1973, Newt, Texas. Meet Maria Flores, a road tripping college student with a passion for photography, exploring Texas during wildflower season. Maria hopes to photograph the blue bonnets, Indian paintbrush, and the numerous other flowers that spring to life in and around central Texas this time of year, sending her family Polaroids of her discoveries. And then she disappeared. 1973. Tragedy and despair have struck Central Texas. A young college student named Maria Flores is seemingly vanished without a trace. She was last seen near the town of Newt more than two weeks ago, but with no physical evidence, the investigation has stalled. With few leads and even less hope, Maria's younger sister, Ana Flores, and a group of her closest friends set out to find their missing loved one. But any grief or sadness caused by Maria's disappearance would pale in comparison to the agony and despair they would soon discover. What awaited this group of youths was a nightmare beyond belief. The events surrounding Maria's disappearance would be just one of the many bizarre crimes later known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The search continues in Muerto County for a missing University of Texas student. The Sheriff's Department says Maria Flores, a native of Uvalde, was last seen near the town of Newt. Her vehicle was recently discovered abandoned, with officials reporting no signs of foul play. Authorities are hopeful that the expanded search... Wes Keltner, CEO and audio and art director of Gun Interactive, explained that the game's storyline was inspired by the modernization of Small Town Slaughterhouse, which ultimately led to the town's downfall. The story is reflected in the instrumental companion to the game, Remains. The town had long been a major meat processing center, and the slaughterhouses were central to the town's economy. However, with the advent of automation and changing gas prices and supply issues, the modernization of the slaughterhouse caused a shortage of work, ultimately leading to the town drying up and losing its primary source of income. The famous phrase, who will survive and what will be left of them, doesn't just apply to the victims in this sense, as the family has also been forced to survive in their own right, losing some of their prior selves in the process. Maria Flores is missing, and frustrated with the lack of help from the local police and sheriff's department, Ana Flores, Maria's younger sister, and several of Maria's college friends head out on their own investigation to find out what happened to Maria. However, in doing so, they find themselves in the same situation when they cross paths with the Slaughter family. On the road trip to their possible demise, the gang stops at a gas station managed by no one other than the cook. He informs the group that the town gets a little rough at night and their best bet is to set up camp in the back beyond the mesquite thick and carry on with their search at sunrise. And knowing of the horrors that they will be about to face, the gang sets up camp for the night. We really liked the idea of the group of kids being responsible for the campsite scene in the 1974 original film. Being able to tie them to that scene really helped solidify their place in the canon all these years later. With that in mind, canonically, this game takes place before the events of the original film. We are exploring the Slaughter family in a pre-Sally Hardesty era. During the playtest, we were given the option between four survivors. It was completely random and sort of just up to RNG to pick who we choose since there was no character selection integrated into the tech test. However, it appears that upon launch, we will have five characters to choose between. Ana Flores. Ana is fiercely motivated by the disappearance of her sister and a natural leader to the group. Determination and sheer willpower are her strongest suits, and she'll need every ounce of her resilience to endure. 
Her toughness rating is the highest of the victims, a direct reflection of her strength and resolve. Her ability, appropriately named Pain is Nothing, reduces incoming damage from attacks and falls. It also grants immunity to the effects of poison. Connie Taylor Connie comes from a life on the farm, where she never shied away from the work that went along with it. While not quite what you'd imagine a tomboy to be, Connie relishes in being the type of person that will surprise you with her skills. High proficiency means she's crafty, intelligent, and ingenuitive. A natural tinkerer, her skills are more surgical than strong arm, and her focused ability can crack a lock instantly. Leland McKinney While Leland might have wrestled in high school, college life is a long way from high school in his glory days of wrestling. He is the toughest of the group, but strength is no replacement for actual toughness, and comes at the cost of stealth. Equipped with the lifesaver ability, he is no match one-on-one -on -one against the likes of the Slaughter family, and therefore his capabilities benefit from teamwork with his peers. Sonny Williams Sonny might have a slightly smaller frame, but he more than makes up for that with his intellect. He's not only book smart, he's quick on his feet and quick with his decisions. Perceptive and exceptionally situationally aware, Sonny will need to rely on his intelligence to survive, and his friends would be wise to reap the benefits of his abilities. His heightened sensibility helps him tune into the surroundings and detect noises made by anyone nearby. Julie Crawford, who was unplayable in the tech test, save for a few hackers who were somehow able to play as her. You could see Julie in the opening rules videos for each match. Julie is a Southern California native with a sand, surf, and sport lifestyle. Whether or not she's prepared for the stress and strain of the experience that requires a different type of endurance remains to be seen. Will her physical fitness be enough to carry her through? The ultimate escapability will definitely help by temporarily reducing stamina drain and making her harder to track, giving her a chance at a mad dash for safety. Through the Tech Test Family Tutorial videos and the Family Abilities and Attributes Explained post on the game's website, at launch it's presumed there will be five main family members to play as, though in the Tech Test you can only play as Leatherface, the Cook, or the Hitchhiker, once again, safe for a few hackers who manage to get in and play as Sissy or Johnny. Leatherface. The butcher of the family, Leatherface is the most brutal of the group. While he fills a variety of roles around the house, there's one he's particularly proficient at. We think it's clear what that is. His main ability is simple. He wields the weapon of dismemberment. The chainsaw. What he lacks in maneuverability, he makes up for with brute strength, able to saw and bash through bolted doors and blockades in pursuit of victims. Stacked with high endurance, as well as the highest mark for savagery, Leatherface is a powerful force that the victims would do well to avoid. The Cook. The old man, the cook. He might say he don't take much pleasure in killing, but he does just fine when needed. He's the owner of the gas station and the order of the household, what little order there is, and knows every inch of these places. One board creaks and he can pin down its location. Equipped with his weapon of choice, a broken broom handle, and his seek ability that lets him tune into every sound and track down those victims. Savagery and harvesting marks are understandably higher than his endurance, which is by far the lowest among the family. Hitchhiker. The hitchhiker is the wiry, greasy, and downright feral type. He's also sort of an artist of the macabre, known to craft items of bone and teeth. His trap ability is a dark extension of that farmland ingenuity where nothing is left to waste, visually represented as snares made of ribs and string. He makes excellent use of his slim frame to fit into gaps and crawl spaces, making it difficult to give him the slip. Naturally, he has the highest endurance ranking of the entire family and is a relentless pursuer. Finding the places he cannot follow will be crucial when he is on your heels. Johnny. Raised by Black Nancy and the closest thing to a true serial killer the family has, Johnny is a predator in every sense. He uses his strength to stalk and overpower anyone he sees as weaker than him which in his mind is everyone. His hunt ability allows him to see fresh tracks and to follow the trail of his victims. Harvesting is fine, but he will never let that get in the way of pure savagery, which is exactly what he relishes in. In a family full of unpredictable maniacs, Johnny is the most unpredictable of all, often clashing with the clan when his base instincts are impossible to ignore. Sissy. A drifter and a product of the hazy, drug-fueled era, Sissy is extremely enigmatic, even for this group. Having spun out of numerous cults, including the Spawn Ranch, Sissy utilizes her wiles to make her way back to Texas, leaving a blood trail in her wake. Demented and unstable, Sissy's turbulent past has only further fed her tendencies. Somewhere in her travels, she's picked up strange organic skills, 
and her poisonous bane ability is the deadly result of that. Do not let her lower savagery rating fool you. She is as every bit dangerous as the rest of the family, albeit in different ways. In a strange and unique way, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or Barbecue Game as the game's files have dubbed it, will not be the first appearance of new characters Sissy and Johnny. Technically. In fact, as a part of an ARG that followed after the game's announcement, the developers created Petals, a seemingly innocuous game about floral photography. This relaxing upon first glance floral photography game is actually a walkthrough in Maria's final day alive, with the game's concluding cutscene being the reveal of what happened to her. Petals is an absolutely beautiful little short game. As you take the photos, your photo journal hints to you what the next photo taken should be to progress you through the day and into the evening. I didn't realize that when playing and spent about 40 minutes wandering around waiting for the sun to go down, and had you not known where the story in the game would take you, an unsuspecting player could spend forever wandering around these luscious flower fields off the side of the road in Texas, and by taking the correct photos in the right order, could be scared totally shitless after taking the final photo of a rabbit in a sunflower field late at night. Hey there! <laughs> what the fuck? Get away from me! Please God, is anyone home? Oh, hi there! Help me, someone is after me! Poor thing! I can help you, you know. Help! Help! We gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> Sissy, what the hell are you waiting on? Get to it! I've got this under control. Help! 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 In 1983, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released for the Atari 2600. In this 8-bit horror game, you are Leatherface. Some tourists are trespassing on your land, so it's time to rev up your chainsaw and hack them up. When you catch one of these tiny 8-bit figures, you press the fire button and kill them. It's not smooth sailing, though. You've got to watch out for obstacles like hedges, fences, cow skulls, and a surprising amount of wheelchairs. You also can't rev your chainsaw needlessly. You only have three tanks of fuel. When that runs out, game over. If you run into an obstacle, you're temporarily stalled. Unless you run into a hedge, then you've got to cut through it with your saw. For each tourist killed, you get a thousand points. For every five tourists killed, you get a new fuel tank. And if you run out, you get a kick in the ass. There weren't many horror games out in 1983, no Silent Hill or Resident Evil to compare to. So due to the violent nature of the game, it didn't sell very good at all and lots of stores refused to carry it. It's not really the most rooted-in-story game for a horror film so franchised and beloved among horror fans, so it's not really a fair comparison to this asymmetrical beast that will be unleashed upon us this summer. How to play as victims. You've been captured by the Slaughter family. Tied up, tortured, and left for dead, you must do whatever it takes to escape the family's property at all costs. Find your friends, hunt for life-saving items like tools, bone scraps, and health, but more importantly, locate and open up escape routes before it's too late. The family is hunting, so move quietly and make the right decisions. Your life depends on it. Stay quiet and hidden. Move slowly and carefully to avoid making excessive noise. Use shadows and tall foliage to stay hidden. Take cover behind tall objects to break line of sight. And last but not least, use the environment to your advantage. Wall gaps, crawl spaces, and unique hiding spots like freezers, armoires, and even vehicle trunks can be used to evade the family. Use them. Watch out for objects that make noise. Moving too fast through the environment can spell disaster. Searching for items slowly will drastically increase your chance of survival. Even moving too fast through doors can give away your location. So stay calm and move quietly. The family is always listening. Find useful items. Tools can be used to break locks on doors. Health items can heal you, while bone scraps can be used to sneak attack or even confront the family directly. Unlock exits. The heavy metal door almost always leads out of the basement. Find and open them. Once upstairs, keep moving if possible. There are multiple escape routes located on the outer edges of the property, so find a way to open them. 
Some escape objectives, like the fuse box and water valve pump, require specific items to activate them. These items can be found scattered around the property. Be on the lookout. Escape the family. Having trouble finding an escape option? When in doubt, head towards the main road or the rear gate. Those are usually the easiest option, if you can get there. The water valve gate and basement door exits are also available options, if you can find the necessary parts to activate them. The basement door requires you to find and repair the fuse box, while the water valve gate needs the pressure valve handle to open. Once fixed, the escapes will open up for you and your team. Use your abilities to stay alive. Used at the right time, they can mean the difference between life and death. Be careful though, star sign abilities have a cooldown that prevent overuse, so plan wisely. Remember, you have been captured, beaten, and tortured, so your injuries are severe. You need to escape before you succumb to your wounds. As the match continues, you will start to bleed out more and more. Be wary of leaving blood trails behind. You can be tracked. Finding fellow victims and working together is recommended, but not required. Grouping with teammates can have a multitude of advantages, but your total noise output might also increase. Choose your strategy wisely. The only question is, who will survive and what will be left of them? How to play as a family member. You're part of the family now. It's up to you to secure the property and stop victims from escaping. The family's way of life depends on it. Keep all doors locked and make sure all exits are closed, trapped, or guarded. Make sure to monitor crucial pieces of equipment like generators, the fuse box, and the water valve pump. The status of these items play a huge role in whether or not victims will have an easy path to escape. Make sure to collect blood from drainage buckets scattered around the map, or by attacking victims directly. Feed this newly acquired blood to Grandpa to make him stronger and more effective. The stronger he is, the more powerful his sonar ability will become. Pretty soon he'll be finding and highlighting victims for the whole family to see. Feed Grandpa enough and he'll give the whole family new abilities that can be used for the rest of the match. Remember, Grandpa is the best killer there ever was. Hunt down the victims using abilities and teamwork. Look for signs of movement and listen for noise. Pay attention to your surroundings and keep your eyes and ears open. You never know where one of those victims might be hiding. Speaking of abilities, each family member has a unique ability that can help hunt and track down victims. Careful though, some abilities have limited quantities while others are on a cooldown, so hunt wisely. Once you locate or find a victim, make sure you have a plan. Try to set up ambushes or catch them off guard. The direct approach isn't always the best, so use your fellow family members when possible. But once your plan unfolds and you get within range, hit him, then hit him again. And remember, if you do manage to successfully hit or execute a victim, take that blood to Grandpa. He's hungry and needs his strength in order to help you. Don't let a single victim escape. After all, we win as a family or we lose as a family. So in the first day of the tech test, only one map was available to play on, which was the family house at dawn. The family house sits virtually alone in the sea of green grass and sunflowers, with open lines of sight anywhere outside. But while doing some updates mid-tech test on the morning of the second day, the developers added in a second map to the game for testing, the slaughterhouse. The slaughterhouse is this maze-like claustrophobic tangle of broken down buildings and cattle panels. And it seems like upon release, based on the article on the game website talking about the different maps, we'll be able to play at the famous gas station from the film, where we meet the cook for the first time in the 1974 movie. The gas station is littered with junk piles and broken down vehicles that have been dumped and forgotten in the spaces between buildings. There is the possibility of a fourth map also being available either at launch or in an early content update, but I'll mention that more in the leaks and spoilers section of the video. Let's talk a little bit about what I liked and disliked about what I've seen in the game so far. So first off, I really loved the maps and I think that they captured the atmosphere of Texas and the atmosphere that the movies created themselves really, really well in this digital landscape. Um, it was all so beautiful to see. I really enjoyed the character design. I also think it fit really well in with the whole atmosphere thing. 70s fashion is on a bit of a rise right now, especially with Daisy Jones and The Six releasing a couple months ago. So it's really cool to see all these different 70s fashion things pop up in modern day media, and they did a really good job replicating it. And I'm really hoping to see Sally's white pants pop up somewhere in the game too. So jumping off both of those, attention to detail in this game was amazing. You can tell that everyone in the art team really studied the original film to capture that whole essence, but also create their own version of it in a sense. Another thing I really enjoyed was the sound design. Uh, I know they used some of the sounds from the original movie, 
and created a lot of new sounds that were similar to the original movie. And I really, really enjoyed that. And I think the whole music and the atmospheric soundtrack that they created for the game of what we heard in the tech test so far was absolutely amazing and really sends chills down your spine at the right moments. And finally, I'm going to give props to the voice acting. Obviously, when you're playing, you're not really listening to voice lines and stuff, but sort of in watching other reviews and seeing the leaked voice lines in the data mine and leaks and stuff. Yeah, the, the voice actors went above and beyond when it came to voice acting for this. So I'm very excited for people to get to hear all these voice lines when the game comes out, because there's, there's some that are going to break your heart. So there weren't too many things I didn't like, and a lot of the things that I have on this list are sort of just from, like, knowledge of the game. So I didn't really know the maps too well, so it was- I was very unfamiliar with the layout of maps and stuff, so I did find myself getting lost a hell of a lot. Uh, my first time on the Slaughterhouse map playing as the Hitchhiker, I spent about half the match just trying to get to the other side of the Slaughterhouse, because I just couldn't- find my way through. I also would enjoy a mini map in this game. And that's another thing I didn't really like, even though it doesn't really exist in the game yet. I wish there was a mini map showing you maybe the layout of like what's in your general vicinity. Cause it'd be nice to know sort of where like doors I might've walked by had been or like little holes to slip through or whatever. It, it would make things a lot more easier to sort of know the layout a bit better but I think it also adds to the atmosphere not knowing how to get out of these locations. The final thing I didn't like was just the subtitles they had for when Leatherface made noises. Um, it just sort of said like concerned noise in just like a normal font or whatever. I really think they could do something different with that to make it look a little bit more appealing to players. And then obviously the glitches I experienced in the tech test, which there weren't too many, obviously hindered my my gameplay a little bit, but honestly I didn't have that many and I'll talk about that more in the glitches section. So one glitch I noticed was when watching the hitchhiker feed grandpa playing as a as the cook. He was holding the blood bottle up and it was above grandpa's mouth but his arm was like way too far away. I don't know if maybe that's an animation thing or whatever with layering or whatever but that was just that's not even a glitch that's just like a, a weird animation thing i noticed but probably just because i it was a cut scene for the hitchhiker but it wasn't for me so maybe it's done differently or whatever the next sort of glitch or weird animation thing i encountered was just like closing doors or gates i found if i wasn't in the like the exact right spot i needed to be in it just wouldn't close i would do the movement to close the door but it just wouldn't close unless I shuffled around a little bit. So I would like to sort of see method for closing doors be improved a little because it is really hard if you're trying to do something quick and you got to like stand in the exact right place to do it because um, maybe you're like slightly too close to it. I think that they could really fix that. Another thing I noticed is that at the beginning of matches after the little tutorial video plays, sometimes the game would freeze or show characters like sort of T-posing or just stuck in a different pose or just like frozen on a screen somewhere. It didn't happen for very long or that often, but I did really notice it when it was happening. Um, but once again, it's probably just bugs they have to work out. They're probably stress testing the game as well. So I, I think that'll probably be improved. And then finally, the biggest and most annoying glitch I had, I only had it once, in the middle of a match, the player results or player list menu got stuck on my screen and literally no matter what I did, it wouldn't go away. I was hitting resume and it wouldn't go away. I was hitting escape. I was literally doing every input I could. Um, I could still move in game. So I did manage to throw Connie into a freezer to keep her there for a bit while I figured out this thing. But it, it just wouldn't go away. I ended up having to force quit out of the game because I couldn't. It wasn't accepting any of my inputs. I've seen another video where someone had this glitch. So I hope that they... Sort of address it it was probably just i hit maybe a button or something i'm not sure i don't know if it was my fault or just the game being glitchy but yeah i'm really glad there weren't that many glitches i experienced because i know that the more glitchy the game is the harder it is to play so congrats on not having that many glitches with any game there's always going to be a chance it gets data mined Data mining involves sifting through vast amounts of data, often code, to find hidden patterns, separate out anomalies, and gain insight. 
Obviously, tech tests aren't the most secure versions of new games. So people took advantage of that and dug deep into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's code to find all sorts of goodies we'll be getting after the game releases. Major spoilers for the game and upcoming releases. You have been warned. New family member, Black Nancy. Not much is known about Black Nancy. She's been married four times, but each husband has either died from unknown causes or suddenly disappeared. The locals, who are familiar with her, always suspected something was horribly wrong, but nothing could ever be proven. She was given the nickname Black because death and despair seemed to constantly follow her. People avoid her property at all costs. She's an expert at using her friendly looks to lure victims into situations they can't escape. Excitingly, people were able to hack and play as Sissy and Johnny. I've seen more Sissy clips than Johnny, and it looks like she's pretty much on the way to being my favorite family member. She's got some cool idol animations, and I guess we'll sing? Here's a clip of a hacker playing as Johnny and performing his execution. We've also got an official video from the game's social media accounts showing off this execution a whole lot clearer. Data mines have also shown that a junkyard map is currently in the game's files, and a map of Black Nancy's house could also be a new map we get at some point, especially where her bio hints about her property. And it also looks like at release, you'll be able to find Maria's corpse somewhere on the map. There's voice lines for each victim's reaction to the body, and they're pretty sad. Here's a taste of one voice line per victim. Maria? Oh my god! Maria! What did they do to you? Maria! Maria! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't believe it! I can't believe you're... I can't believe you're gone, Maria. No. No. It can't be. Oh my god. What did they do to you? Oh my god. Maria. What did they do to you? No, 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 no. I thought we could find you. And last but not least, these voice lines have unveiled a sixth playable victim that will show up either at release or in a content update soon after. New victim, Danny. Uh, oh no, 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 Maria, those, those assholes, they're, they're gonna pay for this. Danny's a tough kid from an even tougher neighborhood. He didn't have the easiest life, but he's a loyal companion to Maria and will do anything to find her. Because of his upbringing, people often underestimate his intelligence. Like Connie, he's crafty and has a knack for quickly fixing things with very little help. Danny's ingenuity allows him to quickly examine and study environmental objects. This will increase his overall knowledge of those items and help him better understand how they work. But this takes time, and if Danny is interrupted during the process, he'll have to start over again. There's also a ton of new skins and clothing options that leaked, so I'll have a couple of these up on the screen now, because there's quite a lot for each character, which is super exciting in terms of, like, customizing what your character looks like and stuff. It's going to be so cool. Ultimately, this data mine and all the leaks probably shouldn't have happened in a sense. It does give away probably a lot of surprises the dev team had in mind for future updates. But on the other hand, please give me more content for this game before it releases. In the tech test trailer, there was no secondary date for more testing, just the game's launch on August 18th. I'm hoping there's a chance for another weekend-long tech test before launch to show off more content and build hype for the game's release. I'm also crossing my fingers that there's an early access version that comes out before launch for content creators and streamers. I love the stories and the characters they've created so far, and honestly would be happy for the game to continue with making new content to add to the lore of the films. But if we're talking about a dream update or DLC, I would love to see some goodies from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It's my favorite film in the franchise, and I think escaping from the radio station is stretch, while being pursued by Bubba and Chop Top would be such a blast. Overall, I'm really happy with what we've seen so far. 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre is such an important horror film and part of film history, and I'm so glad to see it getting the flowers it deserves in the form of a video game that honors the original while also giving fans new content to salivate over. Congratulations to the devs on such an exciting game and perfect tech test. I'm so excited to slash and run around and scream in this game on August 18th. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it around, and thank you so much for watching.